What's up everybody, Subaru Dorks fan here for another car review. This is of course the 2017 Subaru WRX Premium. Huge thanks to Chris for allowing me to drive his brand new WRX here to review for you guys today. So about the 2017 WRX, well, uh, you know, much like the 2015 I reviewed, not a whole lot has changed, but a few things have changed. I thought it was worth reviewing again, um, but exterior wise, it looks uh, identical to the 2015s. They haven't changed anything in that regard, aside from these wheels now, which are standard 18 inch wheels on all models versus the 17 inches on the uh, previous models. Uh, and then of course, his looks a little bit sharper because he tinted the uh, corner lights there and the uh, reverse part of the tail lights as well as the side windows, but uh, really looks great in World Rally Blue. Still my favorite color for these. And I still love the way these look. I mean, really sharp up there you know i love those headlights i love the large hood scoop there nice to have the fog lights on the premium uh, i love the wide body look here of the front fenders and the rear fenders even um, and you have a nice little vent there in the front fender with the deborah x emblem um, and overall they just look really great i love you know the side skirts and everything i mean from every angle honestly i think it's the best looking deborah x since the 22b honestly and uh, i think it looks great Right, for the interior of the 2017 WRX, well, it's a really great improvement over the previous generation, of course, and I already talked about that in my 2015 review, um, but I still just love it, and they have made a few nice new improvements here for 2017. But anyway, first things first, sitting down in these seats, they're tighter than I remember them being in the 2015, so whether they improved them slightly or what, um, but the torso support seems a little bit tighter than it did before, um, and just, they feel really good, actually. Uh, I mean, the thigh support could be a little bit more sporty, but again, this the WRX is more of the daily driver comfortable one. If you want the hardcore one, you can get the STI and then complain about not having sporty seats. Um, but these actually, I think, fit the Debrex very well. Next, though, is the steering wheel in the Debrex, which I love these 2015 and up uh, Debrex steering wheels. By far the best part of this interior, in my opinion. I mean, it's a perfect wheel, really. I mean, just an amazing 9 and 3 grip that's super comfortable. You have these really cool 10 and 2 notches that come out really far. And uh, it's just a beautiful thing to look at. I mean, flat bottom. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's a good amount of buttons here on the left hand side. And uh, the material still, the plastic feels okay but on the bottom here it looks like metal but as you can hear uh, still very much plastic um, so little things you know just minor but overall I absolutely adore this wheel and uh, it's really nice to use gauges in the Debrex again same as the 2015 model still I love them uh, they are still really awesome uh, yeah I love the metal accents on them the red backlighting uh, I just I love the new font and the way they look they're just so much more attractive and so much higher quality looking than the previous gen again and uh, nice color screen there in the middle that isn't really configured but that's okay because coming over to the center here uh, you'll first see uh, this screen up top that has a boost gauge but it also has your you know your fuel economy information torque split uh, all that kind of stuff up there you also have a little display for your automatic climate control which is nice to have that up there one cool thing is on the 2015s the backup camera was in this little screen up here but now it's moved down to the larger screen in the main head unit here which is uh, much appreciated you know it's a larger screen um, and that's another upgrade here for 2017 now uh, it's touch is standard it's a 6.3 inch touchscreen they're saying here um, and it's a nice nice size not the biggest out there but you can upgrade to a 7 inch uh, touchscreen uh, if you get you know one of the nicer packages but I mean it's just great to get rid of that well, finally they got rid of that old-fashioned uh, basic little radio and now you have an actual touchscreen in all models which is a really enticing thing that you know you don't have to get the limited to get a nice one anymore and so that's really great uh, just the basic thing but it does have satellite radio HD radio all is standard uh, Bluetooth audio streaming, all that kind of good, good stuff. And so nice to have that all in there. It's a really nice little screen. Uh, coming down to the climate control knobs, again, same great thing as the 2015s. Just really beautiful. I love the metal finish here and the way that it feels. Very nice resistance to them and overall really nice to use. One other thing to note is you might remember from the 2015 ones, uh, this whole centerpiece here is was used to be carbon fiber uh, trim and now it's just this gloss black. Um, so just a you know, little change there. Everyone will prefer one or the other. Other, uh, but nice to see that they've kind of uh, made that look looks a little bit more classy I think uh, a couple other small little changes they made here for 2017 is there's now automatic up down uh, for the passenger side window as well as of course the driver's side it always had you also have a nicer headliner here that is uh, you know 
nice and dark and I guess supposedly feels nicer than the one before it. Um, it's still not like amazing, but uh, hey, if it's an improvement, that's good to hear. Also, the shifter in the Deborah X uh, is really great. Again, same as it was in the 2015. Longer throws, um, but it's nice and notchy and feels very precise and still very easy to use. Although the clutch throw is uh, a little bit odd and a little bit strange, but I'll talk more about that as we drive. As far as storage space, the Deborah X, again, same as the 2015, very good. You have a map pocket here in the door with a bottle holder. Uh, coming over to the center here, you have a very nice deep cubby that you can fit all kinds of stuff in. It only has a power outlet. I wish there was, you know, a USB jack uh, or something else up here, but all it is is just the old fashioned power outlet there, but still nice to have it nonetheless. You have a little uh, key holder type thing here, and then you have your two cup holders. And then you have the center armrest, which um, is really the only part about this new Direx that feels cheap to me, that truly feels cheap. I mean, this is the same armrest and center uh, console here out of my 2006 Legacy GT. Like, they haven't changed this in 11 years now. It's still just the same thing. It's hard, uh, barely rubberized, um, and not padded at all. It's loose and feels cheap. Um, it does have this armrest extension, which is nicer, you know, for long trips, you can extend it out. Um, but just, I mean, that is really just not fitting for the rest of this car. And that might be an option because maybe this has the armrest extension. Maybe the standard ones don't have this or the nicer trims fix that. But uh, on this one in particular, just something that stands out as a sore point. Um, but you open it up and, uh, you know, it's uh, fairly deep. You can fit a good amount of things in there. And, um, you know, you also have an auxiliary jack, USB jack, and another power outlet in there. Back seat space in the Deborah X is pretty good. Again, same as the 2015, of course. Uh, I'm five foot nine, me sitting behind myself. Plenty of leg room there, uh, several inches to spare. Lots and lots of headroom, of course, thanks to the boxy design. And uh, they're fairly comfortable seats. Not the most amazing, you know, for a four-door sedan, but uh, they're comfortable, and like I said, they're roomy, which is the important thing. Trunk space in the Deborah X is also uh, a little underwhelming given the segment. You know, there are some uh, larger trunks in this class, but uh, it's good enough, you know, for, you know, bringing home the groceries, uh, going on uh, small trips, things like that. I know the lack of a hatch is still a sore spot among Subaru fans. I don't know why they haven't introduced one when they will, but in the meantime, that's what you have to make do with. Unfortunately, uh, you would have more space, of course, with a hatch if they did make one, but uh, it's still a pretty usable trunk. All right, so start up and go for a drive. Uh, the premiums here still have the basic key. You have to get a limited and then get an option package in order to get the a keyless entry and push button start. Um, but this is still, you know, fine. Uh, so you just put the key in the slot. It starts right up. All right, so setting off in the 2017 Subaru WRX Premium. So, uh, first thing that you notice, there's some deer. Hi, deer. Anyway, the other thing you notice, though, um, is like I said, the clutch is uh, very long in its throw. Uh, the shifter is also very long in its throw. Uh, so that's all a little uh, long. I wouldn't say imprecise, but just uh, not quite sports car-like. Um, but setting off here, the visibility is always spectacular in these uh, new Deborah X's especially. I mean, an enormous windshield. You can see at it very well. Very uh, thin A-pillar that's easy to see around. Uh, side glass is all very large and easy to see around. B-pillar is nice and thin. I mean, Subarus are excellent, you know, with their safety and whatnot. And this car you can see out of very well. And there's all kinds of safety tech available. Uh, and even more safety tech if you get the CVT version. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I mean, really great visibility-wise. The rear visibility is also excellent as well so no complaints there and just cruising on a little park road here it's actually newly paved so nice and smooth um, but you can tell just how nice uh, it does absorb road imperfections and things like that uh, they, that's one thing with actually the 2016 model is the premium and limited trims uh, got a slightly softer and more comfortable suspension than the 2015 models and so those changes also carry over here for 2017 so that is one thing I will be trying to pay attention to is how the suspension feels compared to the 2015 that I reviewed all right, so let's turn on to this back road here and see how it does. Same as the 2015s, and um, it, it's a 
enough power. Zero to 60 is 5.4 seconds. And, uh, you know, it's a good amount of power for a car that only weighs about 3,300 pounds. Uh, it's just, it's fun. It's enough power to have fun. I, every time I get into one of these though, I do wish it had more power. The difference is, it's just, it feels not quite as extreme as the previous generation WRX because of the way the boost builds a little more gradually now than it did in the previous versions. With this now, uh, we'll drop down here to uh, about 20, 200 RPMs and stomp on it. And you just ride this wave of torque that it just explodes. And it just, it, it really feels awesome. But yeah, just riding that wave of torque in any gear is just really satisfying and uh, still just, this, this car still just puts a smile on your face and it's just so much fun. It might not be perfect, but it is just so much fun. And uh, so, <laughs> yeah, we're on some really bumpy stuff now and uh, let's see how it handles even tighter corners. Really tight corners here now and <laughs> This is where it's in its element though, it is really great. And now as we're going down a hill with a tight corner here, these brakes, uh, they're not the most amazing, they don't instill the most confidence, but I think a lot of it's just there's a little bit of dead travel there, and once you get into the brake pedal, it feels pretty good. Um, but <laughs> going up some tight stuff here now. Rev matching and stuff isn't the easiest, again, because of that dead uh, throttle response as well. All the pedals uh, kind of have a little bit of a, a lag to them, but... It's just so flat, I mean, no body roll, and it's just, again, it's just fun. There's this unmeasurable, just fun quality about these cars. It's different than the other competition, you know, the front wheel drive stuff out there and, and some of the other more expensive all wheel drive stuff. Uh, and uh, this is just really fun. I just, it, I love it. One thing I will say is uh, the suspension does seem to be soaking up the bumps very well. So that uh, slightly softer suspension here uh, doesn't seem to really come at any sacrifice. It doesn't seem floaty really. It doesn't seem, as far as the suspension is concerned, everything feels really buttoned down and uh, really good actually. Steering weight uh, is really nice and uh, pretty hefty feeling. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of feel to the wheel though. Whenever you're going into corners, you don't get a whole lot of sensation of what the front wheels are doing. Um, but you kind of just point and shoot with the oval drive and everything it just figures it out and you just you can still just point and shoot and it does whatever you want it to do really uh, but like I said there's not a ton of feedback through the steering wheel um, so uh, I, I think the way that I can best summarize how this car goes around corners and back roads is that it's a, a little bit disconnected feeling but still very fun um, it's not as raw I don't think as the previous WRX's but it doesn't handle as well as the previous WRX's either this is more akin to the Evo handling which is always better than the S STI in my opinion and the Debra X of course and so I feel like this has that same good sharp handling now uh, that almost it feels a lot like an Audi S4 honestly as far as how it feels going around corners and stuff um, but it's it's really fun it's just it could use a few little tweaks still and you know I'm hopeful that you know with the new version that's coming out here based on probably the new Impreza that we just saw recently uh, hopefully they will you know take it up one more notch and uh, you know make it faster make it a little bit sharper um, because there are you know other things like the Civic Si has razor sharp throttle response and uh, you know there's other cars out there that uh, make you feel a little more connected to the drive but uh, in this price range though there's not many that will put a smile on your face like this um, and uh, so yeah I mean the only other thing that I really have to say is you know this car is still kind of unrivaled there is no true competition for this all the competition is front wheel drive which uh, you know makes it feel much different uh, you know in handling and acceleration and everything with stuff like the Focus ST and Volkswagen GTI um, and so you know I don't really know if there's any good all-wheel drive competition to this car still it's kind of a one-of-a-kind thing and if you want an all-wheel drive car under 30,000 bucks that will put a smile on your face every day this is still really your only option you know if you want four doors and everything and um, it's still really really tough to beat honestly I mean if you have more money to spend sure you know you can get the STI model you can get a Focus RS you can get stuff like that but this is still such a phenomenal bargain you know for, for the money and it sounds great too especially this uh, nameless exhaust it's just really just gives it a little more oomph than it needed as well to give it a little more character and a little more excitement personally though even though i wish it was a little bit sharper in uh, many ways i think that it still is a ton of fun it would be my pick if i wanted a fun four-door 
all-wheel drive uh, sedan, I think this would you know probably be the only thing to choose because the STI is really fun, but in daily driving can be a little stiff for some. And this gets much better fuel economy, and it's uh, you know got the newer engine technology with the FA20 here versus the old EJ of the uh, STI. And so uh, for those reasons, I still actually think I prefer this. You know, and it's so much cheaper than the STI too. That exhaust on his upshifts. And I love the higher red line here that you do get with the FA20. It's not much, but you do get a couple hundred extra RPM, which actually makes more of a difference than you would think whenever you're really banging through the gears. And, um, <laughs> yep, just so much fun. If I wanted four doors and all-wheel drive, this is certainly what I would be driving still. So anyway, let me know your thoughts on the uh, 2017 Direx here. Thank you guys very much for watching. Huge thanks to Chris once again for allowing me to review his baby here. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.